So I'm out moving hives this morning, just 10 hives from home. And I'll come to this apiary that's traditionally more of a summer apiary. But I can't get over there where I need to go. And this is an apiary I used to have my, you might remember, I used to have my hives just over there. Uh, and I've talked about this place before and it's a really good place in the summer. Not quite so good in the winter. But I've got a new apiary there. A lot of the bees from here will go to the buckwheat in the summer in another, say, six, eight weeks. I think that's all it is. But here it's a good holding place. I'm short on apiaries at the moment, as you know. So I've got to carry these over myself. It's exhausting, but you know what? Us beekeepers, good for the guns. There's only four more to do, and then I didn't risk getting stuck. One thing I'll say about lifting is when you get a hive, stick it right in, the, in, in your waist. And if you're lifting it off the truck, that's a good height to lift from. Obviously, if you're lifting from the ground, get someone to give you a hand. But lifting from the waist isn't too bad because you stick it in there and you walk like that it's fine it's a bit of extra work you know what it is what it is and you get on with your day and you don't get stuck It's exhausting, that's only another one done, but if you do one every three minutes, I've been timing it. I've got three to go. Bit of early morning fitness. What a beautiful morning. I'm out this afternoon putting my supers on. Sol Marso or Pussy Willow's almost finished here, but there's loads more, I mean like tons more to come. Most of the trees are still bare. That's more blackthorn. Some of that's come out already. Some of it hasn't even moved yet. There's always a second load of blackthorn, dandelions, and unfortunately we're going to get one day today and then we've got three days of rain coming. That's why I had to get in here today because, first of all, I need a workout, <laughs> as you can tell. Now I'm actually back at the gym and doing really well, I'm really pleased. This is just an extra workout, a bit of cardio, but... Um, Second reason is I won't be able to get in here and I wanted the bees from home out of the way because it's becoming quite apparent that bees around your workshop are not really the best thing. That's the place I used to have my bees. See how even I haven't even cleaned that out yet, but that's going to be, the, 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 the pallets are going to be moved from there with the tires and put back over there. And that's another job for maybe tomorrow afternoon if the, if the rain passes through, I can just park up there, not even inside and just beaver away there, moving hives around and stuff like that. So that is okay. This is a tremendous place also for chestnut. There's chestnut all the way around here, all in the valley down there. So it's really good. Anyway, let's get these last three hives moved and then job done for the morning. Back home, quick cup of tea, then get a load more supers ready. So we're done. That is really good news. So there's something I always do when I move bees to a new place, and that's just stop when you've unloaded the bees. Just take a moment, get everything ready. Don't rush the opening up of hives. Leave the bees settle for 10, 15 minutes if necessary. They are gonna be bitches anyway this time of year. They're gonna be pissed. They're all quite big colonies. They need a super today. If I can come back, I will. Work out which ones you're gonna open first. What's happened here, you see, is look, I put these on the ground for now. 
and all the bees from the hives behind think that though for instance those two 19 and the one next door is that's their hive there they don't read numbers obviously you got it wrong girls they're not very um uh, illiterate <laughs> so anyway <laughs> but that all jokes aside that's a classic example of drift where bees come from one place and they go straight into another that won't harm because when i open that hive they'll reject those bees trying to get in i think because they'll be a bit bitchy so i've got this six here and a few here that i replaced at the back just take your moment to see where everything is and what i do is when i open these all i'm doing is just popping up the entrance one side with my hand the far side and then i'm kind of out of here so i've got one two three four and the rest are down here so i know where they are but then what i'll do is i'll just back off and i'll just take a stock to check everything visually before I leave the apiary. And have, like Bob Binney says, always have that last look, because then you never know, you might miss something. These aren't gonna be happy. I just pop it up like that, and that's enough to let them out. They can get out now, they can come and go. If I can flick the door higher, I will. You can see they're not very happy. But at the same time, they're also not that bad. Let's just pop this one and this one. I think that's an alive one. I've got to check off. That's why it's not very good. That's fine. So that's the three there. And I think the rest of six here. Yeah, there's nine. That's closed. That's what there's one space there. Yeah, there's a lot of bees in that one. <laughs> Woohoo! So open this one whoa there's a lot of bees there these are good colonies that need to be working that's good they're out that one was the hh i don't know why i marked that but i think that's one that's drone layer whoa big colonies yeah they're nice look at that they're gonna need so this is the laying worker one, LW. And I've marked all these, so let's get, let these bees out. See also the other thing is, where they came from, they had full ventilation in the base. So basically I was really concerned about having them on the ground without opening them, but it's still quite cool. It's only like eight degrees, nine degrees today. So we're just gonna do a visual check that every single door is open, because this time of year, if you miss a door, they will be dead by probably three or four o'clock this afternoon. So don't forget that. And that pollen coming in already isn't from my bees that I've just released. <laughs> They're not that good. That's from the hives behind who they've drifted to because they think that's the place where they should be. So this apiary is now restocked. I'm actually going to put another load of trestles over here for nukes for the winter. So they're going to be in the lee of these trees a bit, but not too far in the trees. See, that's south facing there. The sun rises in the east there and sets in the west, northwest, right over there in the summer. So I get really good sun here and I'm actually super lucky to have this site. And now, unfortunately, the horse that was here in the top section has died. <laughs> I, which is an old girl, a lovely old horse. I can now use this whole area without having to use fences, gates, all that stuff. So all these bees are pretty happy. Let's just check every single door is open. That one's open, the open. Haha, -ha, you see? Oh, I did open that one. That's the one that is originally mini plus well that should be a really strong one and it probably will just check it's got the front off properly now they're really calm bees anyway so i don't expect them to be going mad that's open that's open that's open they're already the same i'm doubly careful about this because i've done this before and i've screwed up that's already that's new that's new that's new that's new and all these there you go, they're, they're all open and flying. They'll be bringing in pollen in about 20 minutes usually, or even less sometimes. That's how long it takes. So I've got a lot of work to do here. 
all these will be going onto the trestles and tires so i'm going to bring a, like a grub axe we call it so i'll be leveling the soil underneath putting the tires down and the pallets go on top and then it'll get them all off the ground quickly so that it'll all be ventilated better and that is such a good thing to have with your bees hives on the ground aren't very good they need to be at least on a pallet and that will all be like this very soon so so there we go let's try and get out of this place the ground is actually a little bit firmer than i thought so i would have accessed through the top but there's an old fence on the ground there and i don't really want to drive over it till i've cleared it out so because there might be barbed wire in it and other stuff and i do not want to give my truck some grief this place is bad for asian hornets when we have it bad but we're going to be trapping everywhere in the spring starting next week but the weather's so bad we still haven't seen any flying yet so okay let's get out of here and go home see if we can drive out okay i absolutely hate this bit i hate driving on dodgy soil but we're moving that's the most important thing get a little bit of speed up and we're okay woohoo so we've got <laughs> the bees moved it was a little bit more work than I wanted, but you know what? If you don't push yourself sometimes, you don't get results and those bees are done. My son couldn't help me if anyone asked because he was out on the squirt last night and he's not even back home, so but I know where he is. I've got a, uh, <laughs> he's out with his mates. I've got a, um, a tracker that on his phone that he doesn't mind me seeing where his location is. If he ever breaks down on his bike, it's quite useful actually. But yeah, no one to help me today. So you know what? We did it. And now we're back home. Super's on, off out this afternoon. Another April. Reverse the truck right up here. So uh, I could actually back it in further. If it was pouring with rain, I would do, but it's a nice sunny day. So I'm just looking at that. I mean, that's what I call blindingly yellow today. We've got just a day. I've obviously just moved those highs and we've got today just to, um, take a load of these out so that's what I'm doing I'm actually making a nice lot of space in here as well so that's good I'll take probably 40 with me today and see how we get on with that I mean the wind has picked up the forecast for the next three days is pretty much terrible so I'm not really expecting anything to be going in but I do expect the bees to continue to be hatching and growing meanwhile we're still in a bit of a mud bath everywhere we go and it's only going to get worse for now there's a lot of heavy rain forecast bad hair day a lot of heavy rain forecast for the next three days i mean a lot so that won't be a problem because i've got the apres done the highs moved this morning i'm going back on the now but i've got some guy coming to buy a nuka bees tonight from the house uh, those ones i moved this morning were from home and I left the five nukes there that were mini plus from last year. He's buying one of those. So I've got to go home and just check that out, check it's doing fine. And then we'll transfer that in quickly tonight. That's one of the beauties of selling nukes this time of year is you're not having to get up at stupid o'clock in the morning and you've got cooler evenings still. So you can open a box of bees, transfer them into a hive, somewhere else's hive, and then they all go in the hive really quickly and you just close up and go. So here's one of the bonuses. So that was something different today. A bit of moving hives this morning. And I'm glad that's done because I haven't got a growing problem at home with bees being into everything. And we've done a whole load of bee work this afternoon. In terms of all the nukes, uh, and I mentioned before, I've actually done a... I know I mentioned before about the size of them, but there was a few that were nearly full in the boxes and they're six frames, obviously. So I've transferred, I think, three today. Just the first few that I see that were really strong and there'll be a load more this week to transfer over. So it's going to be a trickle. And I know it's going to be taking at least a month to do all that. I mean, I've, I remember previous years when we had a start like this. It's, it ends up, you're still transferring bees mid to late April, you know, into the 20s of April. But that's fine. Uh, but then I've got all those nukes to bring back, to clean, to put frames in, to get ready to make splits with. And that's all the cycle starting again. Sunday afternoon, bit of preemptive beekeeping here. I'll explain the reason why. This apiary that I was at yesterday, unloading all these hives and adding to other ones that are already here put earlier. Um, 
I saw a window in the weather this morning. I thought, great, we'll be able to get out there and do all this today. And I've just flicked at the, the weather radar and it's going to rain all afternoon, probably showery. This place is like a swamp, as you know, but I took the risk. It's been dry overnight, drove in absolutely great. This area here, this part of it is actually much drier in the summer and never gets wet. And never seems to have any major problems. So I just drove through the worst part, got through fine. As long as you've got some speed up, you're usually okay. Um, <laughs> so now I've just thought, right, let's get the supers here at least, get most of the equipment here, so that if it does pull down like it's supposed to, I've got plenty of supers here. Now the tops might get a bit wet, yes I know, but I'm going to be here tomorrow, come rain or shine, hopefully get this part knocked out, and get these on stands, get them off the ground, and everything will be good. But that's what this is all about, beekeeping. When you're dicing with dodgy weather in the spring, you really have to um, look ahead a bit and try and be preemptive and do some investment work. So this means that this, these supers are here and I haven't got to lug them like I did the hives from here all the way over to the other side where I was the other day. This is the problem with apiaries in the spring. We're having a normal spring where it's cold, it's wet. We're trying to get things done and everything else doesn't play ball. So not much else to say other than um, be prepared. Dib, dib, dub, dub. Scout woggle at the ready. <laughs> it looks like it's going to be pretty much the same weather for us. For the next few days still no chance of any major sunshine but uh, it is going to be a little bit warmer a little bit less windy so maybe the bees will be foraging them they've been out today when i just came here before it's actually started to rain uh they um were foraging so you never know we might get some supers filled friday morning and we've had the most gross week of weather wind and gales every day however today it is a little bit sunnier drier for the first time the slab has dried out the roads are dried out so hopefully i'll get back in the apiaries and hopefully i'll get on with supering because no more supers have been added since last weekend and it's really worrying for me um our wild cherries are just coming out and that's always a, a sign i talk about See, it's beautiful just coming into flower the flowers are really strong still not too windy today either to wreck them so hopefully there'll be some bees on that later but um my point is well, there is some bees on it now look straight away but my point is this is the same everywhere and hopefully we're going to get some honey in the hives in the next few days we've looked in some colonies and the supers are still empty even other colonies are really strong it's just been no flying weather so this morning I was up at the crack of dawn for a change for me um, to collect a load of pallets. So this represents a quick fix for me. I've got a lot of pallets in a lot of apiaries that are um, needing changing. So as I go into the apiaries to add supers, my plan is to actually change supers. I've got a load in apiaries already ready to change, but these are the extra spare ones that I'm hoping that will um fill the shortfall and then i've got also a stock now of replacements i've tried making pallets before and the problem is it's these ones with the um compressed center there it's compressed wood they do last quite a while and there's a few of them on that but there's also quite a lot that have got decent wood in the center if i can find some there you go, something like that. That's the ones you wear, the best ones, they last the longest. But in terms of buying quality wood, well, we've done this before, just talking about it before, before I digress. We've done this before where we've gone and bought a load of wood and made pallets. To be honest, I paid two euros each for them, 100 quid for 50 pallets. The time it takes to get the wood together, I can go to this guy who's a tiler. They have them in regularly. He keeps the Euro pallets because they're, he gets money back on them. So I'm happy I get my pallets ready. To, I've got to cut this into a third, as you know. But I get my pallets ready to go straight away. So what I'll do is, I um, don't know if you can see. So basically I'll cut that bit there and that bit there. And I can sometimes join two of these together with a piece of wood in the middle. So I use two thirds of one pallet with for two hives and that goes on top of 
the the tires and when i renew the pallet all i have to do is lift it off it's not embedded in the ground the tires are but i just put the pallet back on and the hives go straight on it now you can do this any time of the year it's just so easy to do on your own if you are only lifting a single box one single super so i'm going to quickly unload these well, it won't be quick it'll be like a good an hour of unloading i'll be knackered after that because there's 50 pallets to unload but hey it is what it is they're going to be stacked here for now but then as soon as they're stacked on the slab i can move them inside if it's going to pour with rain so i can keep them dry and they're going to last a long time before they're used needless to say a decent cup of tea is what you need with a job like this the weather's still windy as hell you can see but it means i can get into the apiaries today and hopefully carry on where I left off because I know there's going to be the start of the queen cells because I know that if it's warm now and the bees are able to fly there's going to be compression in the hives and we need to give them that space so unloading these then I'm off to the um, apiary this afternoon to get those ones off the ground and just to carry on like that really just plod along do the best I can catch you later bye for now And we're off. So I made it back to this apiary after carrying the hives over. We are now Friday afternoon. You can see I've made a really good start on getting those off the ground. I've got the two more rows to do. Uh, I got here and there was a swarm in that little tree. I knew it might come and we're like, here we go. But I suppose you could say it's all in the box. There they are fanning their little asses off and all looking pretty good. So the colony's in the box and I'll bring that in a short while back to a place here where there's a space. Because I don't know if you know that, but if you capture a swarm in your apiary, you can just put it wherever you want once it's in the box and then they will settle there obviously wait till all the bees are in the box and they will virtually all go in or sit on top and you can then place it somewhere in your apiary because when bees are in swarm mode they're happy to be moved they don't they just locate to the colony and when any that get lost will auto locate back to the colony that emitted the swarm but uh today is going really well and the weather is dry. We might have three days dry. Let me explain that we've had literally a week of wind and rain and gales, and it's been really strong. But in that week, I've got a lot of stuff done, a lot of paperwork done. So I'm kind of nearly up straight. I'm not there finished with my paperwork for the tax end for last year yet, but I'm nearly there. It just takes such a lot of um, tidying up loose ends, as we say. So uh, we are now, what, the 4th of April? And really all I can do now is just run around like a headless chicken, putting supers on and checking for queen cells. And that's gonna be the modus operandum for the next four to five weeks before we start the harvest. The harvest will start in probably four weeks. Um, I don't think there's any honey in any supers yet, but I'm, I'm yet to go back to the apiaries that I put the first supers on the beginning of this week but these bees are good there's some great colonies here there was one swarm over there which made me think oh god have i missed the boat have i got too far no all these are doing really well they're not too strong they're all in or around their number two partition either trying to chew it a bit or going around to start build the number one spot which is foundation so that's really good and what i'm finding is they're all of a good size to take a super now everything gets a super even if it's on seven or eight frames because we know that with the brood that's going to hatch we've got to make sure you buy yourself a little bit of time not that putting a super on will buy yourself time with swarming if you've got a queen that wants to go and that swarming fever is there she's going to go but anyway um no complaints, nice to be out today. I've got the next two days solid work because it looks like it's gonna go rainy again in two days. 
So I might be able to get this all done and finished. And then the spare supers I stacked up there the other day that I managed to run down here before it rained, even though I've got the truck in today. Um, I'll take what's left with them and then clear here. So here is done. So this apron will be completely done up straight and then we're on to the next thing. So it's like that at the moment. Um, I'm putting the tires down as I usually do. And I'm gonna show you something that I have got working again that is a brilliant help to me. So this is, if you're looking to run semi-professional or, or whatever you wanna do and you wanna run pallets or whatever in your apron and I use tires under the pallets if you want to do that then get yourself a mattock so what happened was this one was actually from the UK originally someone gave it to me I used it abused it the handle broke I couldn't find another handle when I went to Wales uh, over the winter believe it or not I went into the shop and there was it was a farm shop and sure enough, there was the exact handle there. And my goodness me, what a great piece of kit that is. See, it's like a, a bit of a hammer. You've got the swing and it's also a, like a hoe. So you've got the digging action. And honestly, the amount of things this has got me out of, I'm going to take it back home after. And I'm going to soak the whole handle in linseed oil again uh, so that it's got some real good, but a real good resistance to the to the weather but i'm going to really look after this because i know that is such a great tool so that's my top tip for today if you're out and you see one of them and you're going to be putting apiaries in get one of them you can dig out brambles you can dig out small trees with it you can cut roots with it and you can level apiary sites for your tires just by doing that you can see what i've done here i've dug out the front of each tire or the side of each one and leveled it and i've put a higher tire on this side and a lower tire on that side in other words the ply rating that says like 16 or 17 or 15 usually always use the slightly bigger one on the, on your bottom side because we've got a slight slope here as well as a slope forward so i've got to correct it as we put the supers on but it's so important this because all your supers that go on after this if you get it level at the start it's a complete doddle. Everything's perfect. You never have hives falling over. It's just a bit of work you do at the start and at all levels. That is actually a little bit forward, that one. So I could adjust that one after, but overall the bases will settle down. So I'm going around each one, moving the hives forward, coming back, digging the circle in, and then um, moving them back onto the tires. And it's so good to do at this stage because um, when I've added supers on, I won't be able to lift them on my own. So. Uh, there you go. I'm hoping the rain's going to hold off, but we shall see. This has got to be one of the most frustrating springs ever so far that I've done beekeeping in. However, it looks like the weather model in the next six days is finally changing and we're going to get some warm suddenly weather with calm winds. And every day this week it gets a little tiny bit better and we'll just be able to get on some of those flowers. See I've been cutting the grass here and you can even see how quickly it's regrowing this time of year. It just grows like an absolute weed. But anyway, raining today got finished a bit earlier because we've got rained off but I still got about nine colonies transferred up at the nuke yard I'm pretty pleased because there wasn't any swarming anything I found it was all good that's all been supered there as well and I put nukes into hives so they can grow when the flow starts which is great and I'm hoping to carry on tomorrow we have another two days they're given another day of dry weather that's what happens in Brittany quite often we get a forecast and then nothing really happens it's just spitty rain it's a shame because i'm hoping we're going to get if it is going to rain rain properly and put water in the ground but we're not actually getting much rain until this afternoon now we are getting quite a bit as you can hear when you're in the building you can actually hear the rain but that will all change when the mezzanine is built but anyway that's it for now i hope you have a good weekend um i'm just going to be plodding along here but it's all changing all the time the dynamics of what the bees need is changing the colonies are filling up but they're not completely full and this weather in some respects has probably helped us a bit so ta-ta for now take care speak to you again soon